All right, guys, welcome to the next alkyne synthesis video. So we're going to be covering two more alkyne synthesis examples. Um, so if you want to maybe brush up on some of like, your reagents before you watch this, please feel free to do so. Um, otherwise, we're going to get started. So let's see what our first compound that we're going to synthesize. And this is from all previous examples or maybe workshops, stuff like that, um, for past semesters. All right. So we're going to have this compound. All right, and I'm just going to move it down a bit. And they even gave you the name, but I mean, we don't really need that. And they want us to synthesize this starting from something with two carbons or less, not four. All right, now I know you guys are used to seeing four carbons or less, but please read the directions. This was indicated in the directions that it's two carbons or less. You don't want to be in a position where you get something wrong because you brought it down to four carbons instead of two, all right? So just watch out. Please make sure you read all the directions, all right? So let's get started. So what do we have here? We have a cis double bond, all right? So this is a cis double bond. How do we make cis double bonds? Well, the only way you guys know to selectively make a cis double bond is to use an alkyne, right, as your starting region, because remember, we're going backwards in this case, right? If you're thinking, oh, but maybe I could put something like this. Um, I can go like this. And I have like a BR and maybe I can do OH minus and get the double bond there, right? But in reality, it won't really happen that way because first of all, this would, if the E2 would happen, we would get a trans looking double bond. The other reason why this wouldn't even work is because this OH has the basic, um, the most basic atom, sorry, the most acidic hydrogen. So using OH minus wouldn't give you the elimination you guys think you will. It would probably deprotonate the O instead. So you'd get something like this, O minus, you know, some weird stuff like that. So to selectively make this cis double bond, we're going to have to use an alkyne reagent called H2 over Lenoir. Remember, you can't just use regular H2. Regular H2 takes alkynes to single bonds, and we have a double bond here. And so before we go any further, always count your carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll count the OH as seven. I say count the carbons, but really it's counting the atoms, and it's just a way to help you guys keep track of where everything is. So our triple bond, working backwards, should be between carbon three and four, exactly where the double bond is. All right, so let's draw that out. And remember, keep in mind triple bonds. The bonds coming out of the carbons with triple bonds must be linear. All right, and now let's just number to make sure everything is correct. Carbon one is here, two. Remember that these two carbons, that there are carbons there. That's three so far. Four, so we see, okay, between carbon three and four, I have my triple bond, great. Five, six, seven. All right, our numbering makes sense. Everything is good so far. Now, we have our triple bond, and you have this OH. Now, you guys know how to cut down um, compounds with this OH, right? We can use like those carbonyl cuts, right? Another one you guys know is an epoxide cut. Now, you don't need to do the epoxide cut. It's up to you which one you want to do. The epoxide cut can save a couple steps because it can cut two carbons off your main chain instead of one. Now, in this example, I will be doing an epoxide cut. If you want to do a carbonyl cut, that's totally fine. You'll just have to do a couple extra steps, but it's all up to you. All right, and so let's just go over how you do an epoxide cut. All we do is you look at the carbon that the OH is bound to and the adjacent carbon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a dashed line from that second carbon to the OH. You can kind of see how the epoxide looks now. There's that O and that dotted line I drew in here. We have the H, but remember the epoxide is gonna be neutral and stuff like that. So that's how your epoxide is gonna look. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut, if I number this one, two, I'm going to cut after it. So between in red, that four and five labeled carbons that we colored in red, we're cutting between them. So right there. All right. So what I'm going to do is if you look, carbons one and two in blue, those like epoxide carbons, they don't have any substituents coming off of them. So we just draw this regular epoxide, nothing special about it. 
and always number the reagents. That's step one. Step two, we just need a source of protons, so let's just do H2O. All right, and now to draw the alkyne reagent, you just draw it all the same. Your negative charge here. Remember that this region here, this is a uh, good nucleophile and a good base. And so because it's a base, right, it attacks least substituted carbons of epoxides. But in this case, the epoxide, you can see that there is no least substituted carbon. They're all the same. And so that's how we did the epoxide cut here. Now let's just count all our carbons to make sure we have everything. One, two, three, four. That makes sense. And now this was carbon five, one of these, and this is carbon six. And the oxygen we said was seven. So everything looks good here. Now, keep in mind, they said you need to cut this down to two carbons or less. That means all your reagents must be two carbons, including this epoxide. If for some reason my structure was a little bit different, and on my epoxide I had something like this, two carbons coming off, that would now make this a four carbon compound, and you would now have to synthesize this as well. So let's say my synthesis would keep going here, right? But now I would have to synthesize that as well. So watch out for that. There have been times where I or other students have actually had to do synthesis of two compounds that complete one, all right? So just be careful of that. So now we have this four carbon alkyne, all right? And we need to get it down to two carbons. So first off, when you have this negatively charged alkyne, it's called an acetylide anion. Now you guys knew, you guys know how to make this negatively charged um, anion. If I use NaNH2, which is a strong base, it's going to deprotonate a terminal alkyne. So I just have the neutral version of this acetylide anion. And I'm just going to number them again. The one thing, I mean, you know, you never want to make a mistake just because you lost track of a couple of carbons, right? And so if I'm just looking at this going forward, we have this H here. That's going to be the H that's deprotonated going forward to give us that negative charge. All right. And so now what are we going to do? Well, we have this triple bond and you guys learned that we can cut next to a triple bond similar to a how we did those carbonyl cuts, right? With, sorry, with those, ox, those uh, alcohols in an SN2 way, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut between carbons two and three, right there. All right, so I'm gonna cut there. And now, so here's this, um, here's this a new acetylide anion with its own negative charge. Because what we're saying is, carbon three attacked something on carbon two, it attacked, sorry, carbon two. Now, what is it gonna attack? It's gonna attack this compound, a primary bromide, SN2 style. The arrows, if you're curious, is gonna be the negative charge coming in, attacking carbon two to kick out the BR, right? And then that's in two way. And you can just leave this as the negative charge or if you really want, I probably would have done NaNH2, giving us this, all right? Or you can just leave it as a negative charge. But that's how we would do the synthesis. Now, again, I use the epoxide. You can use a carbonyl cut or the OH cut if that helps you more, all right? So now we're going to go into another synthesis, a little bit of a different style than what you guys have seen before on a test, but similar to what you guys have seen in workshop. Workshop quizzes, that is. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to synthesize the compound on the left and the compound on the right. All right. So they could easily do this on the test. You guys mainly see it where they give you the product and ask you to synthesize it find the starting reagents, but they could easily do this too because you've seen in your workshop quizzes, those synthesis, those multi-step synthesis. So this is also fair game, all right? So what are we gonna do here? Let's analyze what we have. On the left, we have a cis double bond and an OH. On the right, we have a 
aldehyde and a, brom a uh, bromine, all right? And so how many carbons do we have on each? So let's say we have one, two, three, four, here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we extended our, we, on our product, we're going to have three extra carbons. Remember that this is your product. All right, let's not get that confused. So we need to add three extra carbons. Now, we can probably assume that the bromine is going to be used for this, right? You've seen BRs used um, in alkyne synthesis to extend alkynes. So this is this area right here is probably going to be needed for the extension. So we can assume that that carbon one with that carbonyl is actually going to be the same as that carbon one we labeled with the OH. So you guys know how to turn carbonyls into alcohols, right? That's called a reduction. So we're going to reduce the carbonyl to an alcohol. How are we going to do that? Well, you can use um, LiAOH4, right, with H2O, step one and step two. Or we can just use NaBH4. So that's what I'm going to be doing. You can pick either one. I'm just going to pick NaBH4. NaBH4. ETOH as the solvent, you could pick MEOH, doesn't really matter. And so it's going to turn carbon one from a carbonyl into an alcohol. So let's keep everything the same. And number again, so this is four, three, two, one. And now I have an OH, it's alcohol. All right. Now, why did I do this? Right. Why are we even? Why did I turn this into an alcohol now? Well, if we're going to extend that BR using alkyne stuff, right? This is going to be the way we do that is through an SN2 with some sort of deprotonated alkyne. But remember, a deprotonated alkyne, that acetylide anion, is a strong base. Okay. And so if we had this OH now, it can deprotonate it. And if we left it as the carbonyl, it could attack the carbonyl carbon. All right. So what we're going to do to ensure it doesn't attack the carbonyl carbon is we're going to turn it into an OH first and protect it. So next I want to do TMS CL over pyridine. And so now we're going to have this compound. And so now we have OTMS. I wrote it backwards, but it doesn't really matter how you want to write it. OTMS. I've seen a bunch of different ways. Or like this. Doesn't really matter. So you have OTMS. Now we protected this guy. Now we can focus on this carbon here and not worry about anything happening to that alcohol or carbonyl. So we have how many carbons right now? One, two, three, four we need to add three extra carbons. And they did not, I forgot to mention, they didn't give a limitation of how many carbons our, comp, our reagents need to be. All we just need to do is start from here and get to the product using as many carbons in, in between as necessary. So we need to add three more carbons. Well, and you can see that we have the cis double bond and we know that to selectively make a cis double bond, we should use some sort of alkyne. And so I'm gonna be using an alkyne that has three carbons because we need to extend it by three carbons. So I'm going to use this. Let's make this bigger so we can see it. And just so you know, to number it, that's one carbon, that's two, that's three. And so it's going to do an SN2 attack on that primary BR. Remember, this only works with primary leaving groups. Right, and they have to be good leaving groups, obviously. And so, our product is now going to look like this. So let's number first. One, two, three, four. Now, oh, no, let me just change the numbering of the acetylide thing so we don't get it confused. So that's carbon four, so I would say five, six, 
seven. So we through our arrows, we showed carbon five on the acetylide anion is forming a bond with carbon four. Okay, so remember it's got to be linear. So this is carbon five right there. That means this is carbon six. And then that means the end part is carbon seven. Okay, so now we have the exact amount of carbons we need, but we just got to finish it up. The OTMS needs to become an OH, and that alkyne needs to be a cis double bond. So how do we make a cis double bond? You know that we can use H2 with Lenoir's catalyst. It's going to do OTMS. And again, always number one, two, three, four. And so we see that on carbon five and six is where our triple bond is. So that's where our double bond has to be. Five, six, and seven. So now maybe that's just double bond. Now to just finish it out, the only difference between what we have in our product is the OTMS. So to turn it back to an OH, just use TBAF. Okay, and that's an example of another alkyne synthesis. I hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Go to the CLC. Um, if you're on YouTube, please feel free to comment so that others who have the same question of you, as you may also get their question answered. And I will see you guys in the next video where I'm going to actually be going over uh, the exam three that you guys took because I know a lot of you had trouble with it. So I'm going to go through the whole exam just so there isn't as much confusion. All right, see you guys in the next video.